Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Big Pig Game by Evan Gibbs. It plays one to four players, takes 40 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. And in The Big Pig Game, you're playing as a bunch of friendly and hungry critters. Your family has left for the day on a trip, and you have all decided to raid the fridge. Your objective is to eat all of the food before the family returns, because if they return before the food is all eaten, then there will be trace evidence left of food, and you will be the culprit. And if you can eat it all beforehand, then you will get away scot-free. In the game, you will be gathering cards, utilizing one of the animals, and you'll be attempting to munch on all the food that is available to you. There's multiple modes of difficulty and multiple player variants in which you're just trying to play, utilizing all the different actions that you have, refreshing, and then moving a car, dictating the family is coming back home. Eating all the food is what you need to do. Will you be able to achieve it in the game? Find out after I explain the setup how to play, and then of course my review. To begin the big pig game setup, the first thing you'll want to do is select a difficulty. And there are three starting difficulties, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast being the easiest and dinner being the most difficult. Once you've selected your difficulty, you'll then go ahead and place down the space or board that you will use for that difficulty. In this example, I chose breakfast. Then select all the tiles from each of the four different categories of sweets, which are donuts or pancakes, the healthy, which is oatmeal, and finally avocado toast, which is safe and place all the tiles in their indicated spaces based on the number and the picture. Additionally, you're then going to select sweet bonuses as well as savory bonuses and healthy bonuses from the decks and shuffle them dealing one out next to the board. Shuffle the action deck, the bad things deck, and the item deck and place it on the left hand side of the board and then deal out item cards equal to the number of players plus one. Additionally, you're going to have bonus tokens, and you can set those down next to the item deck, and the family board, which indicates how long you have until the family returns to see whether or not you have eaten all the treats on the board. Place the car on the start space, and then you're going to be traveling along the track that is indicated based on the number of players that are playing the game. Each of the players will select a player board, which is going to be a different animal. Each animal will have a unique ability and will receive a hand of cards based on the number located on the top left hand side of their hand or fist or, fi or, or fin or a paw hand size, in which case they're going to go ahead and get that many cards from the action deck. Give each player four donut tokens. That will indicate the four different actions players can take, which will also indicate when the round is over after all of the actions have taken place. Then after that, give every single player one of the player reference cards, which they'll be utilizing to determine how the turns work. And then if you want, you can add the very bad things as an additional variant to the game. So aside anything else, you won't be utilizing it for the game. And then you're ready to begin. Okay, let's talk about how to play the game, which is very simple. The first thing you're gonna do is, while looking at your player reference card, is play a Bad Things card from the top of the Bad Things deck. Some of these are lasting effects, which will remain in play until the end of the round, and others are simply going to be discarded after utilized. One might be, everybody discards their entire hand, which can be pretty detrimental. Whereas another one might be, for the rest of the round, everybody has one less hunger. Then you're going to go ahead and add items to the item stack here or the table, which is always going to be the number of players plus one. Remember, you do not refresh items until the start of a round. Then players will take turns. On a player's turn, they're simply going to take their tokens and place them on their action spaces. Once every player has played one, then it'll go back around and play another and then another until finally all four spaces have been closed off. After that happens, that will trigger the end of the round by moving the car based on the number of players. So if you're playing a four player game, you'll move the car straight down the middle of the board. If you're playing a three player game, you'll move it kind of in a semi circle going uh, clockwise around the board, trying to basically reach the house. Whenever your car reaches a space with a cross out symbol, that means that no bad things will happen on that round coming up. If it's just a basic circle, then you play it as normal. Finally, you're going to clean up the round. To clean up the round, remove all snack tokens from each player's character, and then discard each bad thing that is in play, if there is any remaining effects. Discard each item card from the counter, and then go ahead and refill it with number of players plus one. And players may discard any number of cards from their hand. Then draw or discard cards down to your hand size, and finally start the next round. And play will just continue like that. Your objective is to remove all of the food from the locations presented here from the four different types of treats, donuts, pancakes, oatmeal, and avocado toast. And if you can do that before the car reaches home, you will win. 
But the question is, how does that happen? And that's all based on the actions that you're going to be able to participate in. The main action is to play a card. Playing a card will either resolve in one of two ways. You'll play a card from your hand and do whatever it says, or if you have no cards in hand, you'll play it from the top of the action deck. If you want when playing a card, you can play the bottom portion of a card. But in order to do so, you'll have to discard tokens that you receive from the board here equal to the number in the pink square. If you can't do that, you'll simply do the top action. The basic action in the game is going to be munch, and munch is pretty simple. Your character has a hunger value, and when you munch, you're going to be able to remove a token or tokens equal to or less than, cumulatively, the number of hunger that you have. If you have eight hunger, you can get rid of a four and a four, or an eight, or a six and a two, or a two and a two and a four. It's really up to you. If you remove all of the specific tiles on a specific category, then you're going to get a benefit. And that comes with these guys here. At the beginning of the game for setup, you'll also deal out a wealthy, sweet, and savory bonus on the right-hand side of the board here, like I stated. And whenever you uh, finish one of those specific types, you're going to get that benefit and then flip the card over. The pancakes and the donuts are exactly the same thing as far as the specific type of bonus that you'll get, and you can only get it once. So if you complete one and you complete the other, you still only get the benefit once. And additionally, there's other actions that you can take in your hand. Some of them are going to basically give your um, friends or allies in the game a benefits to their hunger value, whether it be a plus four or a plus six, which can increase their amount of hunger that they're going to have on the turn in which they play a munch or even a ravenous munch. Another action could be a ravenous munch. And ravenous munches are basically the same thing as a munch, but when pulling tiles off of a specific location, instead of keeping them like you would a munch, you'll discard them. They'll be removed, which still helps you, but doesn't allow you to keep them to spend them for using abilities on your action cards that could give you a greater benefit. And of course, there's specific unique abilities for each of the characters. Like for instance, one of them will let another play a card, or somebody will let uh, you, one of them will let you take an item card from the stack here. Item cards specifically are things that you can hold within your character. They'll give you bonuses to your hand size, to your hunger limit, and other unique special things that you can do throughout the game. And most characters can hold about two or three items. And that's basically the idea of the game. Play all of your actions and then do it all again and then again and again until all the spaces are filled. And then after that, trigger the end of game where you're going to be discarding things, adding things to the pool here, moving the car around and checking to see if the end of game uh, aspect happens or trigger happens when the car reaches the home space. When the car reaches that space, did you get rid of all the tasty treat tiles? And if you did, you win. If not, you lose the game of the big pig game. And that's pretty much how you play. So as you can tell, the Big Pig game is a cooperative game in which you're pulling tiles from a board. So it's the exact opposite of a tile laying game. It's basically playing cards to munch or ravenously munch on the specific tiles in the specific categories, attempting to use those tiles for cards that will give you more of an advantage to eat more tiles. And that's all you wanna do in this game, eat, eat, eat. And there's a ton of actions that will let you do so. And I didn't talk about all the actions in the game because there's tons of them. Like draw two cards from the deck and then play one of them. Or for instance, there's the munch, which I did talk about. Uh, choose a piece of uh, piece from any food and simply remove that from play, which will let you get rid of something like a 10 or a nine, which are really high in value and hard to do because you're going to need to have enough uh, hunger plus any benefits in order to get rid of that card. Table scraps will let you get away with that. Order up, choose another player that play that player will then munch and so on and so forth. Ravenous Munch with a plus two hunger. And of course, on the bottom of the cards with that little pink square, allowing you to discard tiles that you previously gained from munching to give you a better and unique different type of ability, kind of letting you um, progressively beat out the game with those cards. Item cards. Item cards are lasting effects that stay in front of your player. Some of them will give you plus three hunger whenever you eat unhealthy foods, or maybe just straight up one hunger. Others will give you, uh, oh, I don't know, minus one cost to boost cards, so that pink cost is now reduced from a three to a two or a two to a one, and so on and so forth. Hand size increases, very unique and interesting abilities that will let you kind of improve your character as the game goes on. And of course, bad things. Uh, usually they're going to have some type of lasting effect. Maybe each character has minus three hunger when munching on specifically healthy foods, or maybe uh, there's a cost to boosting cards by plus one. Uh, sometimes it's just the unique benefit, or not benefit, negative effect of everybody discards their hands, which means that when you play a card, it has to come from the top of the deck, which means it's probably not gonna be as good as it normally would be. Don't forget also that characters have unique character abilities, which I really liked about this game as well. For instance, the elephant gets plus two hunger when she munches on healthy foods. That's just nice overall, because her hunger is three, but whenever she eats healthy foods, it goes up to a five. 
Or for instance, you have Hedgy, and Hedgy is going to allow all players to gain one hunger when they are eating a Ravenous Munch. So if you have this character here, all Ravenous Munches are plus one in value. And so that each different player combination or character combination will allow you to kind of change the way in which you play the game a bit. Also to note too, what I like about the game is that there are three different boards in play. Each of the boards has a unique difficulty, whether it be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And of course, the boards are going to be different in values on uh, the tiles that you're going to be trying to take off. So that there is a different set for each of the different boards. And yes, you're going to need to remove the tiles. Maybe uh, the hardest difficulty will have a bunch of 10s and 11s, where normally just the easy one will only have a 10, a 9, an 8, and a 7, and so on and so forth. So what I would suggest for you guys is to play the base game first at breakfast. Don't include any other special unique things, just play it as it is to understand how it works in the team play, because there's a lot of cooperation needed. You need to work together with your opponents to give them benefits that will allow them to munch or ravenously munch heavier, as well as you'll need to also be able to let players play cards when you take actions, or maybe you need to pull items from the shelf here or from the table that will give you some type of unique benefit for the rest of the game. Always note how many cards you have in your hand and how many cards are present in front of you, because there's a limit to what you can do. And of course, what's also nice too is at the end of every round you can kind of discard and draw back to what you need if you don't like your hand you can simply go ahead and refresh it and there's no penalty for doing that thusly giving you kind of a variety of different choices you can make in the game now, while this is cooperative, the question always comes up is, is there a alpha gamer situation? In this game, I would say not really, because the only way that would work is if it would became tedious. Basically, you'd have to tell everybody what is in your hand, what cards you can play, and that would slow the process of the game down. Mostly, I would just suggest don't tell players what is in your hand, and on your turn, work together and ask them, hey, would you like me to do something like this, or how about I do this, and kind of work together in that way. And if you want an extra increase in difficulty, just play the game without doing, uh, without telling people what they have to do, what they can do. You'll just simply play a card that benefits you or benefits another player, all in the attempts to clear off the table. So there's always different ways to play cooperative games. I also like the customization of the characters. Uh, that's really, really unique and interesting in this game as well, because you're always going to want to increase different benefits based on the character that you're playing. And the characters can range. Some characters don't even have the ability to gain items, but they have some unique, very powerful benefit in the game, which is also very nice. And of course, there's also the benefit of pulling out certain categories of the tiles and getting a unique twist to the game as well. This game has got cute, wonderful little art. It reminds me of like the old animation style from YouTube that I used to watch as a kid. Very, very family friendly. This is something my grand uh, goddaughter would really enjoy playing. Most of my cousins, especially anyone at that age limit where it's like 10 and up. Yeah, I would say that 10 to like 15 is a very solid age range for this, this game specifically. But for the players who want a little bit more strategy and are a little bit older, like when I played, for instance, with a bunch of adults, playing at the harder difficulties makes the game very challenging and prevents and unique twists to the game while still being fairly simple and easy to understand. The quality of the components is excellent. I really, really appreciate the quality of the components for this game, even though it is a prototype. I'm very excited to see this game fund because I would like to see what it looks like when it's fully done because you could tell there's a lot of love put into the game. One of small little nitpicks is that the card only goes one way. I wish it went one way or another, and I think with just a different sticker, you can make that happen. Um, the, the fact that when you're playing against the different uh, game modes, you have to you have to use the card to move uh, across this little town here. And uh, when you're playing with a single player, it's the long way around. It makes the card go upside down. I don't know why that bothers me, but it's just a super small thing. Um, I also really like the artwork in this game. I'd like to see probably even more artwork. I don't know how they would actually manage to do that. Maybe just a different variety of cards. Maybe if it's a breakfast tray, maybe two different types of breakfast trays. Because I really, really enjoyed the artwork for the game. But yes, overall, the quality of the components, the quality of the game, the unique twist in cooperation where you're pulling tiles from a board as opposed to putting them down is nice. And the fact that it's super fa family friendly, it's super fun, super easy to understand with a ton of complexity that has a large age range where you can play the easiest to the um, most complex and still is going to be fun. It kind of reminded me of my wife's game Moonshell in that way where you're able to kind of increase the difficulty and change the odds of the game to make it that much more competitive for new players by adding unique new twists to the game. Overall, if you like a family-friendly game with beautiful family-friendly artwork and something that's kind of cute and friendly, maybe even as a gift for this Christmas, then the Big Pig game is definitely something I would suggest you take a look at. I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun. 
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for The Big Pig Game by Evan Gibbs. If you're interested in picking the game up, it's on Kickstarter right now. Go ahead and check the link down below in the description where you can pick up the game. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more videos just like this one where I explain in detail how to play the game, how to set up, and of course give you my thoughts on the game. And hopefully you appreciate that, but I always suggest the best thing to do is go ahead and watch a playthrough. We usually do them on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one so you can see the full feel of the game for yourself and whether or not it's worth purchasing. Thank you guys for your donations on Patreon. Your Patreon support is greatly, greatly appreciated. And there you guys are, so thanks. Additionally, of course, you are very, 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 um, I know, looking forward to my Moonshell game that is on the boats right now. I still haven't made an update because we've been so busy, but the games are on the boat, the inserts are gonna be made, um, and we have the pins coming too, so everything's getting done, and we're looking forward to a Christmas release as long as nothing goes any more wrong that's gone uh we've still managed to keep on track with what we wanted to do so hopefully that's exciting news for you all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to eating all the food before the family gets home with you next time